Hello, everybody, and welcome. And here I have the great pleasure to have one of my favorite master of all time, Gabriel Moget. I, I say it in French because I find it sexier, Gabriel Moget. And so Gabriel is sweet enough to uh, agree to answer my questions for you all. And uh, and I have planned so many things to ask uh, him for you. But uh, I wanted him to be able to express things pretty freely. We usually talk pretty freely together, and I wanted to to keep it free as as much as possible. But um, so, Gabriel, um, what would you think is more important to as from someone like you to? For students like mine to know about aromatherapy, like uh, which side? I mean, from a point of view of being a traditional aromatherapist and needing to be certified and validate aromatherapy, or being completely on the side of the future with you know quantum aromatherapy and practicing remotely and doing weird stuff. I mean, what for you is important in there? Well, I, I, I mean, I think, I think for me, really, what that brings home to me is, you know, these two sides of us, I suppose, really, that the one that uh, um, needs more of a framework, you know, and 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 then the other one that, which I, you know, I think you've helped me open that door which is more towards, you know, the intuitive. And um, it's almost like the left brain and the right brain. Oh, and I'll tell you what, what? in that way about those two sides, yeah. and I'm, I'm just researching this at the moment because I'm doing this course, and I didn't mean to mention a course I'm doing, but I'm doing one. Well, you can mention the course also. I'm doing well, that's okay. But I'm, I'm doing one in um, July with my um, colleague, who's a um, friend, as uh, Laura Cantelli, who's the editor of the International Journal of Clinical Aromatherapy. Oh, sorry. No. That was the one I used to <laughs> co-edit. I'm terrible at these things. Oh, okay. No. It's the International Journal of Professional yeah. Holistic Aromatherapy. Thank you. And... Um, yeah, and we're doing this on olfactory aromatherapeutics and ah, going, in, ah. oh, going into the whole olfactory science. Now, this is the interesting thing. Do you know what? Part of the way they research the left and right side of the right. brain, yeah. they, they actually use the left and not left and right nostril to, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Actually, there is a link. They no. can do, yeah. I'll give you more information about it. So you'll be finding this interesting. Now, see, I think that this is a good thing because what I'm really fascinated by, and I've, you know, you've inspired me in this direction as well, which is making this link between the two, you know, things that look scientific. If you look at them yeah. through the way you see the world in that magical way, you know, then you can often make sense. The science can sometimes just prove things that we've, you know, been in, in, part of ancient healing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to go off too much of a tangent. I know no, what no, you're saying. No, go ahead. I, I like the study side, basically. And I, yeah, I do, you know, I do believe in certification because. That's been my life, really. I started an association, which, you know, I founded one even 30 years ago, and now it merged with uh, another one. But, it, you know, we've got 2,000 members in 50 countries. Yeah. And we, listen, your students, we would love them, once they've done your course, join us and be part of that. And that's part of the structure. But you've also got to sometimes be able to you know like i don't know fly like an eagle you know <laughs> you know like you, you teach me to do and so yeah i want to thank you for the inspiration you've given me in that direction in particular so i'm i about the quantum side of things i'm fascinated by it 
I'm a, I'm more of a student on that side of things. But what to me and what you have shown me, especially with the pendulums, is how to become more intuitive with aromatherapy. And I think a lot of people need that. Even mm-hmm. people who are very scientific, but maybe especially. <laughs> <Are> you. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to turn it into a lecture. But <laughs> no, but you know, yeah, exactly. I'm completely, I go in your way exactly. I think that, yeah. you know, what miss, what the scientific miss the most is the, the, this touch, you know, the, they need the intuition at the end to validate what they've been doing because not everything can be reduced and reduced and reduced to uh, units that can be compared to other units and you know yeah. nature cannot be reduced also at the and yeah. become abstracted like that and sometimes yeah. If you want to really um, be close to nature, you cannot always abstract everything either. I mean, you know, that's the big danger now. We, I mean, the internet and these the screens. I mean, I'm a big, you know, Mac fanboy. I've been using Apple Mac since 1990. I mean, I love, you know, creative for me. I can even edit music, do page layout. But the danger is in this world, you know, and young people get lost in it. You know, they, they this AI thing. Hey, what about ah? What about nature? So you have to make balance. That's what yin and yang is, isn't it? So the more time that I sit and work, yeah. the more I'm going to get out there and you know walk and breathe and and part of this as you say and I, you're so right when you say abstracted and part of that of course is we lose touch with you know our senses especially smell so aromatherapy really is all about it's healing in itself you know especially if or well, pure oils you know obviously um it has to be good quality and in, in france you've got the best so. i know you got, like wine right <laughs> like wine exactly I would say and girls, but I want to. Oh, well, I was going to add that, but I didn't, <laughs> want to, I didn't want to come across as too frisky. We've got a terrible reputation, the English. You know, we're terribly saucy. We can be. So I thought I'd try and, you know, restrain that side. But if I'm, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, it is, but it's all about, but seriously, I do think the Latin cultures, look at them. They all are around what is this medicinal plant belt, you know, the Mediterranean diet is part of it, living long. But all part of that is because those people are still following those old ways of the, you know, old French ways, Provencal ways. Mm -hmm. That is so much more, as you say, connected to nature. Exactly. And the food and the culture of that, you know, is something to be cherished. And of course, you know, it's a beautiful experience whenever you go yeah, to France, Provence, everywhere else. Yeah. But I so think that's connecting to your intuition. Well, yeah. You've seen what I, I, I've used you as a guinea pig for little things. Uh, and uh... not as cute, <laughs> not quite as cute. I'm a, more, more like a rat. I'm a, oh, I'm a no, more... no, no. But... <laughs> Anyway, um, and you know what I want just wanted to to show you how we can go uh, f- much much further in terms of um, making it in- individualized. Uh, I-, I think that the secret of the the future in care is about making it very very individualized and personalized, and I would say. Uh, uh, sur mesure. I don't know how to say it in, in English. Anyway, so um, what is, what, what, say say that say sur that phrase. Sur mesure, sur mesure. You know that in French, sur mesure. No, you know, you customized, customized. I would say. Oh, voilà, well. customized. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you your input about since we need so much about customization about customization yeah. in care and yeah. in identification of needs 
what what is your view on this uh, this um come on um emergence of so many already bland blended uh, stuff everywhere well i mean you know the interesting thing is i mean you know it's always been like that really even going back to the 80s you know like in terms of aromatherapy you know i mean and like in england i mean what happened now this is the interesting thing okay i mean first i should say that i was i was coming from very much from chinese medicine direction when i discovered well when i i already hadn't and it wasn't a discovery at that stage i discovered when i was much younger but i trained in you know herbs and then in aromatherapy between about 80, 1985, 1988. But prior to that, my first introduction, and still a big part of my work with aromatherapy is based on Chinese medicine. Now, Chinese medicine is yeah. all about the diagnostics of Chinese medicine. It is so useful. I well, think what I mean is it's so much about in, that individual tailoring Exactly. And, and what, what I teach on my diploma course for any main kind of condition, it depends on what it is, but let's take a really simple one. But, and, you know, and this is also part of the Ayurvedic approach of the, the traditional Greek approach. If it's like bronchitis, you might have a, you know, a, 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 a cold, a damp type. Yeah. With, you know, lots of, uh, you know, um, mucus and loose yeah. cough. Yeah, exactly. Or you could have a hot, dry type mm -hmm. that's much sore, much more. And you need, you know, you need, and that's not part of science at all, that kind of. And exactly. Now, that is also embedded in the French tradition, médecin douche of, of natural medicine, because, and they call it the terrain. You yeah. know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the terrain. And it's that, what is the terrain? It's just your underlying immune state, ability to resist disease. If you, uh, you know, and, and if, if obviously, if you overindulge, especially with things that are really deleterious, like fast food and industrial products, and you've got a lot of free radicals going on as well, which has also been part of my research, Uh, and you're not having enough fruits and vegetables, then you don't have a very healthy terrain, just like if you have poor soil quality, where there's like, you know, toxins in the soil, what is going to grow that's healthy? Exactly. So the foundation of health is this French idea of the terrain, this Chinese medicine idea. Similarly, we call it constitution. And my teaching in london for three decades really and still with the, what i do even online with my teaching and writing is all about partly a big part of it is teaching people the chinese medicine approach in a really simple way you know in a pretty simple way that's suitable just to give them an extra tool just like you have your tools as well and i think you know these things can often work quite powerfully together as well really so um Yeah, and, you know, and finally, just to say as well, who was it who actually, within aromatherapy, who really put, laid the foundation for that individualized approach, of course, was Margaret Mowry. A ah, friend. oui, of course, she started it. And it was her approach which, which brought, was the foundation of the British, what's called the British School. Yeah. It was, I mean... Her followers, like Michelin and Arcier, came to London, and that's really where aromatherapy yeah. took off in Britain. And the British, and it's funny because the weird thing is, is that this British school of, as it's so called, aromatherapy, very much based on massage, which is not so much the case in France. Yeah, I know. The French school, what became known as the French school, paradoxically, yeah. is the very scientific approach where you yeah. tend to take oils orally and only doctors doing it mainly not like us people yeah i know so it's a weird thing that the british school came out of the french know, and yet the, I know, french I know, I know. the polar but listen that's that's a little bit i don't want to make give people the impression that this is a kind of current thing it's mainly historical 
we've kind of gone beyond all that now, really, mostly with the uh, ICANN and Rhiannon and all the clinical know, and therapy, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, that's yeah. happening in the associations. Yeah. And now it's much more of a mixture with people like we were talking about, Marianne Revan. We've got now PhD people in these countries getting interested in essential oils and aromatherapy and um, the ones who become part of our community become part of our community yeah. and, you know, and, and I think yeah and, exactly. and, and, there, and many of them I must say are also very spiritual intuitive people as well not just scientists yeah. just like some of us who are more Exactly. Yeah. It's important to stress that it can be combined because even through what I teach in a quantum aromatherapy class, they have yeah. the, these poor, 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 poor students. They have, I don't know how many classes on physiology wow. and anatomy. And wow. each time I introduce them to Chinese medicine, just... poor things. Oh, they have everything. Wow. And from cool. that, yeah. after that, I introduce them to what is invisible. But I think that if you if they don't have these base in what is very tangible, they cannot, you know, it, everything that you can teach in what is invis invisible and related to to um, Ah, to what your your core is telling you, to what your um, feelings are telling you, everything is dispersible if you don't have something very strong, tangible on the visible side. So I always give them something very tangible. So see, everything is mixable, yeah. mixable, blendable, blendable. But I loved what you said about uh what happens in the terrain and the link between the terrain and the ground and all what i teach them is to be aware of how much toxicity in what you know in what is in our earth, the ground the toxic ground of the the earth and what we breathe and what we smell and what we 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 drink and, and eat impact all this terrain uh, and all our ability to link ourselves to our intuition. And I, I think the more we use essential oils, the more we uh, e ease the way to detoxification, just yeah. because essential oils facilitate the detoxification, but also because the more you, you use oils, the less you're going to use toxic products. What do you yeah. think about that? Do you think there is a link between using more oils and using less toxic products? No, I think that, well, <clears throat> you know, I'll tell you what. I, yeah, I do. I do think there's a link because, you know, I mean, one of my first, te my, my first two teachers, really, I mean, a, 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 among my very, very first teachers were two, you know, very famous French. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Well, one Dr. Penwell, Daniel Penwell. And and even though they their approach was, you know, really the most science, I mean, it was called scientific aromatherapy, you know, it's really scientific, but Daniel always stresses, you know, you can't if you really want to benefit from essential oils, it's part of a whole lifestyle. You know, he called it the aromatic lifestyle. Yeah. It's in his book, The Aromatic yeah. Lifestyle. So I'm really into that. I think uh, even if you go out for a walk, if you're conscious of the smells, you're breathing, I mean, that's aromatherapy as well. But then, you know, we can cheat and bring a little bottle with us. <laughs> but know, this is what I'm trying to teach my students. I tell them, don't yeah. just use essential oils when you feel you have something wrong. Use it right. every day to make sure nothing yeah. happens. Also, yeah. Are you using oils every day, Gabriel? Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm mean, yeah. I mean, I've got the diffuser. I probably, I don't know. I probably OD'd. I probably <laughs> over because so I've got the diffuser going on. And then, um, and I love to have them in the bath. But at the moment, we've got a bath in it. We've got two kind of little abodes, and there's a bath in the, in this one. But I don't often come into this one. And the other one, the bath is actually outside. No. Yeah, it's quite private, though. We're quite private. No one can see because it's quite a big it's a half an acre and everything, redwood trees. 
and um, and it's been a bit chilly. But when I'm at, every time I go in the bath, I you know I was like put essential oils. But otherwise, I've got this diffuser, and yeah, I you know, and and or in other ways as well. And also, I take a lot of aromatic herbs. Even mm. every time I have tea and coffee, I never have. To be honest, I'm probably overdosed. Don't take me as an example. Okay, it's made me a bit woo. You know, it, I swear I to God, it, it overdosed. Yeah. Maybe yeah. afterwards, if they take, take, they could dissect my brain and figure out there's <laughs> way too much eugenol, um, clove, all these things in there. I know it. Kidding, no, because but... me, I tell them all the time: don't hesitate. Put some in your face cream. To put, to put some on your breast. Put some on your belly. Put some on your your feet. And me, I have some from head to toe twice a day. You know, at least yeah. twice a day. Yeah. And and sometimes people ask me. Is there a risk of adding too many oils? Me, I, I tell them, no, I would be dead for a while otherwise. But if yeah. I, what do you think? Is there a risk of adding too many well, oils? Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that if you study, I teach essential oil safety, and I've hosted Robert, you know, who wrote the yeah, book. Of course, this is like, how I am. Yeah, exactly. References. We had 120 people in London one time. That was fun. But um, so uh, what you're saying, though, if you, you know, if you know and you teach Which that. Which one to, to use? Teach the basic safety. Exactly. Otherwise, now I'll give you one, the latest example of something, because, you know, you've been working with me mm. in terms of recommending specific oils. I hope you don't mind mentioning that. If that's, unless that's some, is that all right? But um, and Better Bear came up. I think you suggested because I had a driving test. Yeah. And and for some reason, I I did something that I suddenly thought, why don't I do this more often? I put a couple of drops in my hand and I put it yeah. in my head. Mm -hmm. And I think because we used to teach Indian head massage at the college and everything, and I thought, why don't I do that more? Because yeah. that's a really great way. Because that's not going to go into the scalp. No. But, you know, the thing is, what I tell my students, I have a yeah. bunch of oils that are very, very safe oils, that I, what I call skin oils. I won't oh, let yeah. them do it with clove or cinnamon or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, with geranium and, and, and um, what oh, I yeah. use all the time, carrot seed and sandalwood oh. and stuff like that. Oh. I use them all day, every day, from head to toe, patchouli, rose, rosewood, and these oils. How can you hurt yourself with that? Well, do, do you know what? Right now, I'm, I've got to finish it, but I, I've got to finish it and send it in because I'm doing um, – I'm sorry to interrupt you. Have I no, interrupt? don't interrupt. It, it's fine. Con con uh, but um, – at the end of the month, I'm, 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 you know, giving a talk for the uh, the Alliance of International Aromatherapists, yeah. and I'm doing it, and it's quite a uh, this conference. I think is well, I'm giving a research update about sandalwood, and I've almost finished the. I've got a few more slides to do. A lot of what I'm talking about in this talk is about preventing cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think I've told you before that part of my research, I have down, for example, I've got over 100 research papers about the therapeutic benefits of them, yeah. and 21 wow. that it, that especially the main components in sandalwood, which are santalol, alpha and yeah. beta santalol, they're stereoisomers, as you know. And um, 21 papers that, really demonstrate that it does have as has always been you know given credit going back to ancient times but prevents skin cancer yeah um as antioxidant anti-inflammatory yeah. and pro apoptotic as well which basically just means it helps to restore the cell's natural cycle exactly of growing and dying instead of proliferation you know yeah. and that's that natural cell cycle that's what it does so it's a remarkable 
you know, super medicine, I think, chemo preventive super medicine. And if you're putting it regularly on your skin, I recommend, you know something, honestly, I think all women should, all women should. I know, I tell them. So to prevent breast cancer as well, because I had a a good, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. someone I admired very like, like, a jazz singer who died too young. You know, so it's, you know, and, and sandalwood really, and I've, I've got a formula, I've, you know, suggested, and, you know, I'm going to be mentioning in this talk. But anyway, so and I you agree. Can give the formula, huh, Gabriella, because well, me, I I'll tell send, them to, I, 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 I prescribe them to massage their breast every day. I tell them, put oh, your oils on your breast every day. Already do it then. Yes. See, you're already there. But I would love to have your your formula. Yeah, I'll send you my paper thing. I'll send <laughs> it to you. Yeah, send it. Yeah. Because me, I tell them I use the research on lemon. Oh and, yeah. Eh oui, that's of right. course. Yeah, lemon, I know limonene. Oh, exactly. oh that's really... So I use that to tell them to stimulate the apoptosis with the lemon uh, on the. Oh breast. yeah, and also such go- so good for the you know lymphatic drainage. Exactly, well. exactly. Yeah. So lemon and uh, mandarin and uh, sometimes grapefruit, but I tell yeah. them to massage their breasts with that every day. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I feel sorry for people who don't know what we know. I know. I mean, this I is, I, you know, I, and after, I mean, uh, when did I just, I got, I was working at Neil's Yard in Covent Garden when it was just one little shop. <laughs> and I was at acupuncture school and, and st- I'm still just as like crazy about essential oils. I don't know. You know, I just think it, they just grab you and that's it. You know, and just, oh. Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you something. Since you've been in England so long, yeah. Do you think the royal family is using essential oils? Well, you know what? Actually, because well, Prince Charles, uh, King Charles is very much into into nature stuff, and yeah. Well, I can tell you two things in that score that are quite solid facts. The first thing is, I mean, bless her, uh, rest in peace. But Di- uh, Diana, mate, Diana, around nineteen ninety seven, put aromatherapy. You know, like in the public Absolutely. consciousness, more, almost more than anyone up until then. Oh, wow. So the fact that Diana, can you imagine, this was the most photographed, she's the most photographed woman in the world. Yeah. Ever, yeah. ever. Wow. Even still, I don't know, maybe Beyonce or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know, Rihanna or whatever, but... But um, yeah, and uh, uh, and and there she was well known for going and having aromatherapy in London. Oh, wow. So that re- yeah, that put it on the map. Charles and, and then Charles has a general interest in you know complementary medicine, and then he met. I know that um, I didn't get to meet him, but Sylvia Baker, who was um, I worked with in the in the 90s later when i wasn't oh, part I, of oh, okay. the governing body yeah yeah she, she met char prince charles when he, right. you know, she met prince charles so so yeah there's we've got we've got we've got links why did you need some you know you, are you planning on visiting um did you want to check out windsor or i can have him meet you at the airport oh really no no because <laughs> i tell you that because for my uh, my doctorate final paper, I had to use. I wanted to use a, a virtual guinea pig, and I looked into it. Was I was finishing it when Her Majesty the Queen died, and so uh, I had to find a guinea pig. And I thought of him and Camilla, and I thought, okay. What happens with them right now energetically, knowing that at the moment where everyone, usually at this age, people are retiring and uh, and for them, it's the beginning of everything. And I, I was looking into their energetic level. I, I have ways to look at every, all what is wrong with them. And it's funny, I use them as guinea pigs to do evaluation and I, I, I measured their cortisol level and their serotonin level. And I thought, oh my God, they are in a, such a bad state. And I thought, okay, I hope they have access to alternative ways of taking care of them because otherwise I don't see how they can cope with what happens 
is happening to them right now. And yeah. It's I know the big thing. I know that, I know that uh, like the Queen was very keen on homeopathy. And I think Charles as well. Like even the, the royal physician, I mean, he was a medical doctor, but he's also like a homeopath. I think now I don't know who be interesting to see who Prince Charles' royal physician is. But, yeah, but it needs to be someone who's maybe more into aromatherapy. Maybe that be would be better for him than homeopathy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not because between you and me, I was use, using homeopathy before I started with the oils. And no. now I don't see why I should continue with homeopathy when I have the powerful, you know, I mean, I did, I must say, I had a mate, to give the home, homeopathy its due. Now, two things. I I did have a, a, a quite a stunning cure myself um, of, in the 80s, because I was living in London. I think it might partly be the pollution, but, and stress, working too hard, perhaps. I had trouble, like, catching my breath for a long time, you know, um, and not really asthma. I mean, I never went to the doctor with it or took any medication, but it get, was getting bothersome a bit. Not constant, just sometimes it's just like, and um, I don't have it these days, but she, you know, for a long, long, long time living in, in, in the country. But I went to um, this home, well-known homeopath. I met him because my mentor back then he was very much had been using essential oils for um, AIDS patients, you know, mm -hmm. HIV positive. And he I had mean, a conference. In he? he held a conference in 1986 at the Institute mm -hmm. for Complementary Medicine in London. Yeah. And yeah. one of the people he invited was um, a well known homeopath, Michael Strange, who had also been had treated many, um, you know, gay men because he was gay, you know, course, gay yeah. men. Yeah. 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 And I, I was, I remember sitting and waiting, you know, because I was pretty, you know, obviously young and, and the organizer was my mentor and he was one of the speakers. So I was sitting in the front row and I turned to the fellow next to me and I said, I don't know. I wonder who, my, where, I wonder, you know, I wonder who Michael Strange is. I don't know him at all. And he said, that's me. <laughs> and uh, I ended up going to have a consultation with him. Yeah. And he, this was again, like 87. And he prescribed me one, uh, I, I, I'd taken homeopathy before, just like first aid, you know, 6C, you know, yeah, exactly, or, yes. like that, a digestion or I took uh, cell salts a lot, things like that. But he, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, he gave me a constitutional remedy, just a one-off one, a carcinosum. Ah. And that thing I had with the breathing, just, <laughs> yeah, just took it away. Um, so that was quite, you know, yeah, that was powerful. I give homeopathy its due. But I'm glad I'm not, the one reason I'm glad I'm not into homeopathy apart, as opposed to aromatherapy is there's no research, you know, there's no, there's, it's not the same like with, with the medicinal plants because it's also ah, part right, of okay. herbs. I love all that. I love all that research. Why do I love it? I love it because coming from Chinese medicine and, and understanding yin and yang and the five elements, I can see it from that angle. I can see it from that angle. And that's what makes it so much, to me, makes it even more interesting than if it was just pure dry science, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> now is the time for you to ask you the... Oh. Uh, if you had to advise, you know... If you had to to give my students three oils that to you they can safely use every day oh. I, for anything, I mean oils that are absolutely your favorite and why they were your favorite. Now, because I like to compare, you know, sometimes some will. It's very revealing what they think of being the. Well, I mean, one I, that you, no, I think when you said the okay. Well, well, um, that's a nice question. Thank you. When you said uh, when you said about ones that you can use most liberally every day, he said, "Well, actually, funnily enough, I suppose this is almost accidental." 
but but you know in a way but i've got with me lavender and sandalwood and then there's geranium i suppose those ones i mean favorites a difficult one because i've got different kinds of favorites of course. Of course. but but ones that i guess if i wanted the ones with me like sometimes on a certain trip you know depending on the type of trip <sighs> If I'm going somewhere where maybe, I don't know, the, it, it, I love India, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably going to maybe be sure to take uh -huh. happy. If you were going in India, you'd better take oils for, you know, digestive issues and uh, viruses. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> but if I want to go somewhere, if I want to take oils with me, like you say, that are going to be ones that are going to be the most comforting exactly the, famous, the most like a mother yeah and i don't worry even if i have too much it doesn't matter yeah it's those three sandalwood lavender geranium yeah. and yeah. they are skin oils the ones, kind of well, oils that you can put directly on your skin on your breast anywhere you you don't need you don't need to worry about did i put too much not too much Yeah, I, I think it's better to, you know, I mean, to be fair, I, I prefer myself. I mean, I know sometimes like lavender and so forth. I mean, it's a, you can absorb them better if you do a kind of one third, two third, you know, mm -hmm. you could, you'll, you'll, you'll get more absorption with some, you know, lipid transfer. Exactly. Anyway, for instance, yeah, of so, course. Yeah, but, but you know, but, for some people who have no clue, I like to give oils that they don't risk anything with, you know? Yeah. And, oh. Uh, and if good. you if you know, for instance well, i'm leaving i'm going to for i'm leaving for europe uh, in two weeks just the idea oh my god i'm gonna have i don't know how many trains and planes and flights and i always carry oils with me in this case and of yeah. course if i have to use oils in the plane and i have to think of using a carrier of some sort i'm gonna be it's gonna be messy it's gonna be but i sprinkle yeah. my seat Before I go in the plane with some <laughs> some lavender <That's> latifolia. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love spiked lavender. I love latifolia. I put it it's everywhere. Great I Perfect. Perfect. Exactly. I want to sit there. You, exactly. I, might, I, I would come up to you and say, look, how about trading seats? Or, <laughs> there's a free one there. Maybe that chat. Oh, he's your husband. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm really. <laughs> uh, See, I told you. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, it's very important. I, I think yeah. each time people ask me, you know, what are the ones you always carry with you? And uh, yeah, in the yeah. plane, I always have some spike lavender. That's for sure. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And usually it doesn't bother anyone. Originally, I was using something like rosemary and I thought, oh my God, it can... Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's, that's it's best. too much, but uh, yeah. spike on the seats, it's a very good idea. And uh, <laughs> you know, you can get listen if you do it with a smile, you can get away with almost oh. anything. And you have a very nice one, too. So, <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> I try well. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Master, for all these sub suggestions, and I'm sure the my girls will love it. Very, very nice. Thanks a lot.